believe you could, too. I believe you could. That's good. That's very good, sir. God damn, you play a mean banjo. Hey folks, it's Jim from the Movie Wine, here to review the American thriller Deliverance, directed by John Borman. The film follows four middle-class businessmen, Ed played by John Voight, Lewis played by Burt Reynolds, Bobby played by Ned Betty, and Drew played by Ronnie Cox, who decide to canoe down a river in the remote Georgia wilderness for the weekend for some male bonding and to connect with the outside of modern society before the river valley is flooded by the construction of a dam. While the pampered men initially are spirited by the experience of canoeing down the river, things head south when Ed and Bobby run into two mound men threatening to sexually assault the outsiders. Though they're saved by the efforts of Lewis, the film presents a new challenge of morality and conscience outside of civilization with no rules and a contempt for the city boys. It may seem like they're in the clear as they bury one of the mountain men, but they're not out of the woods yet and they still find their lives in mortal danger. Deliverance, based off the book by James Dickey, who not only adapted his book, but also makes a small appearance, is a master class intention. It's a pleasant weekend turned to a violent nightmare. Some may not care for the pace of the film, and it's true that the first half an hour or so is slow. It takes its precious time, but even in the more pleasant moments of solitude, something seems to be terribly off-kilter. We absorb small triumphs of mankind going back to its roots, taking in the scenery and the mountain air. However, an altercation with the locals earlier on underlines the paradise. When Ed and Bobby are taken hostage, it's a grueling scene. It's a testament to the performances and director John Borman that even as we are oversaturated with violence and sexual assault within films today, Deliverance is still haunting. The iconic scene that involves the frightening Bill McKinney and Nigel Risk forcing Bobby to squeal like a pig while Ed watches in horror is uncomfortable but effective to say the least. While a musical score can be accommodating, sometimes it's also intrusive. Not here. This moment of violation is within complete silence. The film is also impeccably shot, capturing the beauty and the terror of the wilderness. The film satisfied a few careers too. Ronnie Cox, who many are familiar with from films like Belleville's Cop and Robocop, made his film debut along with young Ned Betty. While Cox is terrific as the conscience of the flick, Betty is superb as Bobby, a portly outspoken fellow, getting his first taste of the outdoors and the brutality that he never expected. After this traumatic event, he isn't vocal. Instead, he's in shock. Reynolds is charismatic as the real estate macho man who suggests the idea of canoe trip, aware of what's being lost here. To him, this is merely a game of survival, willing to adapt to, or at least attempt to adapt to the location. Sadly, Mother Nature is indifferent to him and others with its fast and dangerous waters. However, despite Reynolds' tough exterior as Lewis, this is Ed's journey, carried by an assured performance by Boyd himself. When Drew's guilt weighs on him and Lewis's bravado is gone after a painful injury, Ed takes charge. He's the closest thing to a lead in this film and endures physically and mentally. There might not be another film that recalls nature as well as deliverance. It's kind of like my older cousin will sing the tune of when we're out on the water. Of course we laugh knowing the creepiness that theme by Eric Weisberg brings up. It's amusing how a relatively simple theme stays within your brain. Showing the ecology of man and nature, the unnerving masterpiece is the perfect argument that there's no place like home. That's it for the movie rewind. Have a good day folks. Until next time.